Good evening, everyone. Tonight we are going to be finishing up our episode, our series on stuck with the episode called Unstuck. Uh, this series is done by Jenny Allen and um, we have really um, been enjoying it and I hope you will continue to get a lot out of this last episode. So we're gonna start this now and then afterwards we'll have a few minutes of discussion. Thank you. thing I have to give you is God and that heaven is coming. I don't have hope outside of that. But the cool thing is, I think it's okay because he's God. He made us. He designed us. He knows how this works. He, he wanted to fill this. When I started out on this journey of figuring this out for myself, around and I saw all my friends and I saw it in my own soul and we were all just in knots that I could see in people's eyes, you know, they're just all tied up. And I saw it in myself. I was anxious and worried and I cared about so much about people. And I knew I had believed in God for a long time. I believed in Jesus. I trusted Christ. And for a long time, I had probably articulated pretty well what that meant. And yet, I don't know that the insides of me looked any different than someone that didn't know God. I was stuck. And so I, I go to God on this exploration and say, okay, what am I doing wrong? What am I missing? And I realized that the things that I had believed about him, maybe I didn't believe them that deeply. See, I, I wasn't trusting him. I was afraid. I was worried. I was trying to control my life. So when I read verses where Paul describes that we are crucified with Christ, he says, those of you that believe in Jesus, you died with him. You laid out your life with him. I, I wasn't willing to do that. It was too costly. And he goes on to say in Romans, but whoever has died, he's been set free. He's been set free. I want to be set free. I know that all of us want to be set free. That is the desire. But are we willing to hand God everything? Say, say, here's our life. Take everything in it. Take my hopes. Take my dreams. Take my expectations. Take my rights. God, have all of it. All of it. That's when we find freedom because we let go of what we think is going to make us happy and it never does. We let go of that. And then God gets to step in and go, okay, now, now, Jenny, we can work. Now we can do things. He gets so loud and so real when you hand him everything. I love the ocean. When I was a little girl, though, I was terrified of it. I walked up to it, and I thought, it must go on forever. I remember thinking, there can't be land out there, or I would see it. See, nothing else on this planet reminds me more of God than the ocean. It just is so big, it's so powerful. It goes on forever and ever. See, I think one of our problems, probably our biggest problem, is we make him so small. We might believe in him, but we, we push him down and stuff him into our understanding so that we can control him or control 
the slide better. In John 15, God lays out how this massive God is going to work with me, how he's going to work with people. He lays it out and he says, the foundation is going to be Jesus Christ. The foundation is going to be what he did when he died. And he saved you from your sin. That will be what you walk on because see, that's going to free you up to be forgiven and to live in grace and peace. So you don't have to pretend anymore. You don't have to put on good works to impress me anymore because I wasn't that impressed anyway. That's going to be the foundation. And then I'm going to fill you with my spirit. I'm going to give you what you need so that you can do life, so that you can run this race full out. Run your guts out because you're just here for a minute. And you're who I have. See, I'm going to, through you, produce fruit. I'm going to produce this stuff. And it's going to display my glory on this planet. That's our role, that we get to know God, be filled with him, and display him to this planet. It's so, so exciting. It is so what we were made for. I just, most of my life, I feel like all I did was think about myself everything, try to make myself happy, and, and God had this plan, this huge, enormous thing that I was missing because I was trying to build a little life, like a grain of sand in light of all of this. What a waste. In Ephesians, he talks about, Paul again says, to know Christ, to know what he did for you, that he forgave you, that he died that death for you, to know Christ, the love that he has for you, how deep and wide and high and long that it is. To know that love is to be filled with the fullness of God. All those empty spaces, all those broken spaces, all that hurt that we have inside of us. See, knowing him gets filled up. to be filled with the fullness of God. <clears throat> so, I wanted to read a little bit from John um, 15, which um, is what we were supposed to be doing for our study for this week. Um, I'm just going to read the first few verses of John 15. I'm going to start with one. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch is in, in me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you, unless you abide in me. <clears throat> so, um, we all experience difficult times. We all experience our times when we're kind of stuck. And I think to a large degree what Jenny Allen has been trying to tell us is that when we're stuck, it's God um, pulling us towards him to bring us back into relationship with him or to... Um, to, to through our relationship with him to prune us 
uh, to give us something that we may need in the future, to give us something that we need, may need right now. You know, uh, times uh, can be hard for us. It can be um, where we experience death, whether we're facing our own death or whether we're facing uh, the death of someone we love. Um, we can be going through financial difficulties. We could be going through problems with family and children, trouble at work or school, uh, difficulty with friends and, 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 and sickness, all kinds of difficult, troubling, hard times. <clears throat> uh, but we're fortunate because, because through Christ, we have a hope that others might not have. But also through Christ and through God, we have a relationship and we have the Holy Spirit, a helper, someone to help us get through those difficult times. Um, so um, we're very fortunate in that degree. <clears throat> God has blessed me with such a wonderful family. I have been blessed with parents who love one another and brothers and sisters that uh, care for each other. I have a wonderful husband and, and, and good children. And um, the thing that I wanted to say about that, though, is, is that I had a really great relationship with my mother. <clears throat> um, in fact, my brothers and sisters would say I was her favorite. I think that as we've grown older, we've come to realize that not necessarily a favorite, but my mother loved us each and all equally, but differently. <clears throat> And for me, she had high expectations. Um, she expected a lot out of me. She expected me to work hard. She really had high expectations. Um, and one day, I was complaining about that. And I was saying, why are you so hard on me? Why do you expect so much out of me? Why do I have to make better grades than everyone else? Why do I have to work harder than everyone else? Why do, why do you expect so much out of me? And she stopped and she looked at me and she said, would you like me to treat you like I treat your brother and sisters? And I sat there and I thought, no. Because in actuality, the hard work that I was doing was paying me off in big times. Uh, I was making better grades. I, I was reaping benefits from working hard that, um, that, that maybe they weren't. I don't know. I don't know what they were getting out of the things that they were doing in life. But I will, will tell you that I've had a very good life. I had a very good relationship with my mother. And I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. <clears throat> so sometimes through the hard stuff, we get blessings. Sometimes through the hard stuff, we, we gain wisdom. We gain endurance. We gain strength. We gain freedom. And we gain a relationship with God that... Um, that is stronger and better because of it. So um, I guess we have to be thankful um, <clears throat> in all things, as the Bible tells us, and, um, and always to look to God. Um, I wanted to share with you another verse. Um, <clears throat> shoot, I didn't mark it very good. Oh, here it is. All right, <clears throat> this is Galatians 5, 13. For you were called to freedom, brethren, not only, excuse me. For you were called to freedom, brethren, only do not turn your freedom into opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word in the statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And I think that um, that, that is um, what God is trying over and over and over again to teach us, is that if we love one another as ourselves, if we care for each other as he wants us to do, we are going to find strength and freedom that um, only comes through him. And so with that, I'll close tonight's um, lesson 
and uh, we'll see you tonight. Thanks. Bye.